Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome Her Majesty the Queen and the Royal Highnesses, the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall. Your Majesty, Your Majesty, Mummy. <laughs> I'm sure you'd want me to thank, on your behalf, all the wonderful people who've made tonight possible. All the performers, the, the artists, the musicians, the comedians who made such jolly good jokes. <laughs> Gary Barlow for helping to make the whole thing possible. And above all, all those remarkable technicians, all 600 of them, behind the scenes. <laughs> without which nothing would happen. And if I may say so, Your Majesty, thank God the weather turned out fine. <laughs> And the reason, of course, is because I didn't do the forecast. <laughs> Your Majesty, millions, we are told, dream of having tea with you. Quite a lot, quite a lot of people have very nearly had a picnic dinner with you in the garden in Buckingham Palace. The only sad thing about this evening is that my father couldn't be here with us because, unfortunately, he is uh, taken on well. But, ladies and gentlemen, if we shout loud enough, he might just hear us in hospital and get us. A Diamond Jubilee is a unique and special event. Some of us have had the joy of celebrating three Jubilees with you, and I have the medals to prove it. <laughs> and we are now celebrating the life and service of a very special person over the last 60 years. I was, I was three when my grandfather, King George VI, died. And suddenly, unexpectedly, your and my father's lives 
were irrevocably changed when you were only 26. So, as a nation, this is our opportunity to thank you and my father for always being there for us, for inspiring us with your selfless duty and service, and for making us proud to be British. Proud at a time when I know how many of our fellow countrymen are suffering such hardship and difficulties. Proud to be lining the banks of the Thames in their millions, despite the rain and the cold. Proud to be part of something as unique as the Commonwealth, which, through your leadership, has given us that essential sense of unity through diversity. So, Your Majesty, we offer you our humble duty, and with it, three resounding cheers for Her Majesty the Queen. Hip, hip! Hooray! Hip, hip! Hooray! Hip, hip! Ladies and gentlemen, Her Majesty the Queen will now light the National Beacon. So Bruno Peak, who's the pageant master, presents the Jubilee Crystal Diamond to the Queen. And this is the vehicle for lighting the last of 4,200 beacons in the UK and across the world. The last one being this one on the Mall, a flame six metres high, which signals that this diamond jubilee is being celebrated fully and formally outside Buckingham Palace. A crowd of 20,000 people who have enjoyed the very best music, the very best entertainment for this diamond jubilee, and many thousands more lining the Mall and St James's Park. There'll now be a fireworks display set to a diamond theme designed by Michael Lakin. 
5,000 individual bursts of fireworks in four minutes, all set to glorious music. Let's enjoy it. A splendid and fitting firework extravaganza thundering through the sky to bring the Diamond Jubilee concert to an end. Join us again at 9.15 tomorrow morning when the Queen will travel to St Paul's for the service of Thanksgiving, the culmination of the Diamond Jubilee celebrations. Until then, from all of the BBC team at Buckingham Palace, thank you for watching and good night.